Indian brand Tata released an electric car for 10,000 US dollars for people in India. I, for one, hope that this thing is not just for people in India because it deserves to see the rest of the world too. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back. Everyone else, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of the electric revolution. Tata are going to be part of the electric revolution. I did have my doubts for a little while there. They're pretty late to the game. Yeah, they've done some stuff, but really, to be honest, compare India to China. And obviously, you know, China has been focusing on the future of the automotive industry. They have been aware for a long time what that future was. They stuck to their guns. They took a risk and it's paying off for them. So kudos to them for doing that, because realistically, Tesla and China together have been fundamental and crucial to the world's shift to electric vehicles. Unfortunately, India, on the other hand, hasn't really played any significant part in that. Part of that is their protectionism. They have a very protectionist car market. People say the Chinese market is. It's not really. For example, many people are not aware of the fact that you can, in fact, own your own car factory in China now. You don't have to have a JV partner anymore. So any legacy automaker that wants to can own their own factory in China. Strangely, ever since that rule came into place, there hasn't been any company that's actually gone and done what Tesla did and build their own factory, which I find very weird. But anyway, the point here is $10,000 electric car is exactly what people in India need. They don't need Tesla vehicles, believe it or not. They don't need a Tesla Gigafactory. Yeah, that'd be nice. But the reality is India's car market is pretty small when it comes to expensive electric cars or anyway, or, you know, $30,000 plus vehicles, pretty small market. But this car is perfect. In fact, this car would be perfect for about half the planet. Tata Motors has unveiled the Tiago EV. It's an all electric model for the Indian market. Hopefully it isn't just for India. It has a price of 849,000 rupees. That's equivalent to around 10,700 euro or 10,000 US dollars. So is it any good? Well, actually, it's not bad. The Tiago EV is offered with two battery sizes, 19.2 and 24 kilowatt hours. So 24 kilowatt hours, that's a pretty good size battery pack in a small car. That'll give it a range of 250 kilometers in the smaller variant and the bigger battery pack, 315 kilometers. However, I don't know how that range works out in the real world because that is on the MIDC cycle, which is the modified Indian driving cycle. I find it weird that countries have their own driving cycles. I mean, China, CLTC, we should all just stick to one standard. Let's just have a global standard, WLTP. Let's just all stick to it. That's what I suggest. What do you think about that, guys? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's, um, maybe I'll make a video about that. Let's have one driving standard. Let's get rid of all these confusing different driving standards from different countries. Anyhow, the front mounted electric motor produces 45 kilowatt in combination with the small battery, 55 kilowatt with the 24 kilowatt hour battery. The vehicle with the larger battery costs 999,000 rupees. So uh, yeah, what's that? 1 million rupees, which is 12,600 euros or around about 12,000 US dollars. Not really, you know, it's not really affordable in comparison to some Chinese cars with similar battery pack sizes, which are a bit cheaper, but it's not too far off. Depending on the equipment, the list price rises to 1.2 million rupees or 15,000 euros in its full specifications with every additional option. In the base version, both batteries can be charged only with a 3.3 kilowatt AC charger. The large battery, a 7.2 kilowatt AC charger is optionally available. With a DC fast charger, you can get 110 kilometers of range in only 30 minutes. The standard charging process from 10 to 80% takes 57 minutes. So when's it gonna be available? Well, orders actually open on the 10th of October with deliveries scheduled to begin in January, 2023. The base price quoted is for the first 10,000 orders with 2,000 reserved for owners of the previous Nexon EV and Tigor EV electric models. We believe now is the right time to fast forward the ongoing revolution towards the future of mobility by introducing vehicles that will encourage rapid adoption of EVs, said Shailesh Chandra, Managing Director of Tata Motors. 
The Tiago EV is not a model developed from scratch as an EV, unfortunately, but it's actually a conversion of the Tiago internal combustion engine gasoline powered combustion car that has actually been available for six years. It was first released back in 2016. In the future though, Tata will use a purely electric platform for their EVs, which they're working on right now. The company presented the Avinia concept study, which is based on its own pure EV electric car platform. In the next two years, in addition to the Nexon EV, Tigor EV, and the new Tiago EV, another combustion engine model with electric drive is to be launched to the market before vehicles on pure E platforms are planned. And Tata actually plans on using the Volkswagen MEB platform for some of its EVs as well. Now, if you're watching this channel and you're wondering to yourself, who is Tata? Never heard of them before. Well, Tata is an Indian multinational automotive manufacturing company headquartered in Mumbai in India. It's part of the Tata Group. The company produces passenger cars, trucks, vans, coaches, buses, luxury cars, sports cars, and construction equipment. And it was founded all the way back in 1945 as a manufacturer of trains or locomotives. The company actually manufactured its first commercial vehicle in 1954 in a collaboration with Mercedes-Benz. And that collaboration ended in 1969. In 2008, the company launched the Tata Nano, the world's most affordable car at that time. And Tata Motors subsequently acquired the South Korean truck manufacturer Daewoo Commercial Vehicles Company in 2004. And they've been the parent company and owner of Jaguar Land Rover since the company established it for the acquisition of Jaguar Cars and Land Rover from Ford in 2008. Tata Motors' principal subsidiaries include British premium car maker Jaguar Land Rover, the maker of Jaguar and Land Rover cars, and the South Korean commercial vehicle manufacturer Daewoo. Tata has a construction equipment manufacturing joint venture with Hitachi and a joint venture with Stellantis, which manufactures automotive components and Fiat Chrysler and Tata branded vehicles. On the 12th of October, 2021, private equity firm TPG invested $1 billion in Tata Motors electric vehicle subsidiary. Now Tata Motors actually has automotive plants in a number of other countries as well. They've got vehicle plants in six cities in India, as well as in Argentina, South Africa, the United Kingdom, and in Thailand. The company is currently ranked as the 265th largest in the world and it's part of the Fortune Global 500 list of the world's biggest corporations. Now, right now, they don't actually make many EVs. In fact, the Indian market isn't really set up for electric cars, but I see that changing in the future. And Tata, of course, is the company that needs to lead the way in India. Fortunately, it looks as though it's making a good start. $10,000 is a really good price that a lot of people in India will be able to afford. Of course, lots won't but hopefully eventually they can make some even cheaper EVs. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.